My next guest just won her fifth U.S. Senate term, though not a single poll showed her ahead prior to Election Day. In fact, the final poll before the election showed Senator Susan Collins of Maine down by six points. A Quinnipiac poll a few weeks earlier had her down by 12. Yet, Senator Collins ended up winning her home state by nine points, and she captured all but two counties in the state of Maine. So this makes her the only Republican senator to win a state that was also won by Joe Biden. Now, Senator Collins, a moderate, is poised to become a powerful Senate influencer. As Politico notes, with Republicans likely to hold a, only a slim majority, the moderate Maine senator will play a key role in legislation. Here now exclusively for her first post-election interview, GOP Senator Susan Collins of Maine. Senator Collins, congratulations to you on your win, and thanks for being here tonight. Thank you, Martha. It's great to join you. So when you hear those poll numbers, you know, what, what goes through your mind? Why do you think they were so off? And can people trust these polls anymore after this election? After this election, I think the polling industry needs to take a hard look at what it does. I noticed that all of these polls had an online component, which I believe makes them less reliable. They clearly had a hard time reaching rural and independent voters. And I also think there's a more of a reluctance of voters to participate in polls. Another related issue, which you mentioned, a newspaper in my state published a poll the day before the election showing that I was six down. I think the news media look, needs to take a close look at how it reports on these polls. Yeah, I think those are great points. Um, in terms of Joe Biden, you had a conversation with him. You've been friends, worked together in the Senate, obviously, in the past. Uh, what do you think you can work with on him? If you are going to provide this bridge, potentially, where will it be? Where will it happen? Well, I hope, for example, that we could work on an infrastructure package. We uh, need a lot of repairs and replacements, not only of roads and bridges and improvements in our seaports and airports, but we need rural broadband. If there's anything that this pandemic has shown us, it's the inequities that exist in rural America, where there is not access to rural broadband, which has made everything from telemedicine to working at home to teaching children much more difficult. So that's one issue. And for me, jobs in the economy, helping our small businesses, another round of the Paycheck Protection Program, which preserved so many jobs during this pandemic, which I was the chief architect of, and also making health care more affordable. Those are all priorities where I hope that we can come up with common sense solutions. You know, so some people say, Look, unity is not a goal that is achievable. You're either conservative or you're not. And this is Bernie Sanders talking about how he sees the way that he looks at things, which I think is probably very different than the way you and a lot of folks in Maine do. Watch this. I come to, sometimes find it amusing when our opponents talk about the far left agenda, raising the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour, when you're talking about expanding health care to all people as a human right, making public colleges and universities tuition free, these are not far left ideas. These are common sense ideas that the majority of the American people support, and we're going to fight to make sure that they're implemented. I mean, I, you know, I think a lot of people would see those as far left ideas, almost socialist ideas. I mean, he's a democratic socialist. Uh, there's a big disconnect here between your party and his party. Absolutely. And I think one of the messages that voters sent was they are rejecting that far left agenda, which includes packing the Supreme Court, defunding our police officers, and also ending the filibuster, Medicare for all, which would uh, decrease the quality and accessibility of health care in this country, cause many of our rural hospitals to close. Yeah. Those are far left ideas. And I know Bernie sincerely believes in them, but I think it's pretty clear that most of America does not.
How are you going to work with Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, at least he is now, and, and he hopes he will be after those Georgia races. Um, if you're going to try to do some things in the in the middle lane here, he, it, he may not be in the mood to do that. He wants to win even more seats in the Senate in 2022, and uh, he may not be wanting to compromise on a lot of these things. Well, I don't think we should compromise on the far-left agenda that Bernie and others are pushing. But I do think there are ways to work together on everything from another COVID relief bill uh, to deal with the health and economic uh, consequences of the pandemic to an infrastructure package, as I just mentioned, and also making the market more competitive for prescription drugs to help bring down the price. You know, that's that's something that yeah. we ought to I mean, all President be Trump has ta talked a lot about that and surprise exactly. billing uh, as well. Before I let you go, just, you know, I'm curious about the Amy Coney Barrett vote. And if you had known that you were ahead by as much as you won by, would you have supported her? It would have made no difference to me in how I voted because I said before Ruth Bader Ginsburg died that I felt that we had established a president four years ago and to be fair that we should not confirm a Supreme Court justice prior to the election, particularly when it was so close to the election. It's not a comment on her or her qualifications. And let me say, I was appalled at some of the anti-Catholic and anti religious rhetoric that was thrown her way. Um, but so it's not a matter of her qualifications or temperament or experience. It was a matter of fairness and playing by the same rules and being consistent. Senator Susan Collins, uh, thank you very much. We look forward to talking with you as you um, work in the Senate uh, in the coming session. Good to have you here tonight. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Martha.